to these guys. And they were supposed, under a contract, to have special access to the documents to then redact and to remove names of sensitive things, that, you know, certain informants and people and sources uh, for their own safety before publishing the uh, the WikiLeaks cables, which would be crucial and would usually expose something of interest to the public. So not just releasing every single thing, but, but trying to find what shows you a case of corruption and misconduct in the government and then trying to release the documents. So The Guardian was one of the leading newspapers which did that. And uh, what actually happened uh, recently is the one of the editors in the Guardian, or all the I think it's the uh, I think it's the brother-in-law or something of the of the editor, he released a book about WikiLeaks, trying to kind of uh, piggyback the uh, the whole experience that he had from the inside working with these people, uh, and he pu published the the password the the password for the whole. A stash of documents which would enable people to basically access all the unredacted documents uh, of uh, diplomatic cables and everything which is extremely sensitive. And once he had done that, uh, the uh, WikiLeaks people realized that this is completely out of control and every person who downloaded the, who downloaded the, the so-called insurance package for uh, Julian Assange, a, basically a complete listing of all the documents and all the contents of that, was able to now get all the documents in any form, even with the things which were previously removed uh, for the fact that there were sensitive information. So anyway, WikiLeaks decided that because it was already out, they were going to just publish a quarter of a million or so uh, cables. And the relevance of this to me is the fact that over the, the next, I'd say at least several months, maybe a year, I'm planning to go through certain documents and certain cables that reveal the involvement of governments in the uh, uh, in the helping of proprietary software, in the stifling of free software, or maybe even the help of free software. But we're still trying to research this issue, uh, and this is really important if you if you're looking from a very uh, if if you want to look back several decades and look at the role of government in the or at least the uh, the, uh, uh, the certain departments of the government of the United States. Uh, through interactions with different embassies and con and, uh, uh, and and people who they have working around the world, if you want to study what they did to stifle the relationships between, uh, let's say, Linux and certain vendors and countries, you can see that. So I've started posting some uh, some cables gradually, uh, and this does show you mostly. Uh, I think the, the moral of the story so far is that you see lots of the people in government actually lobbying and, and marketing for Microsoft and actually trying to discourage governments from moving to Linux. And it's interesting especially because you consider the fact that these people are being funded by taxpayers and what they do basically is just work for corporations in the states and not necessarily for the interests of the people. So I'm just wondering, maybe uh, maybe Rusty, you've got some uh, opinions on that? I, I was going to say, uh, this is going to be the cynic answer on me. And, but let me give this answer first. This is news to people. <laughs> yeah. uh, the yard uh, evidence is, I think, because we usually need to try and show some evidence to, to show that. Yeah, well, and it, 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 it's sad how true that is, actually. Um, you know, it, it's like I, every time somebody has a good idea or something, you know, I just immediately think, I hope this person fares better than Tucker. Because... Uh, <laughs> Like for anybody who doesn't know what I'm talking about, there Google the terms uh, Google the term pin goose. You will find some interesting stuff. Uh, it's in no way related to technology, but it's this. It shows that this sentiment has been around pre 1950s United States. You know the status quo above all else, and it 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 has more to do with the fact that um, I think it's it's an almost part of the human psyche. People don't like change because change is change. You know, they they know yeah. the rules for today. If yeah. things change, they have a new rule book to learn. Well, we don't want to learn a new rule then book. Then you have the disruptors as well. Actually, let, let me just go a bit on a, a bit of a off topic. Uh, well, not completely off topic, but I find that these days you've got the people who are very much sticking to what they know, and very often tends to be the older generation. So they very much are used to what they used to know, and they're not very uh, in, they're not very inclined to learn new stuff. They don't choose to like some of them don't really choose to learn how to use a phone because they don't think they will ever need to really go into the whole culture of phones. Uh, so that's the kind of conservative type of uh, people. So they they want things to stay the way they are accustomed to, 
Um, but then you have the young generation. The young generations like to individualize itself. It's all based on the um, changing of things and being part of the disruption. So if you want, if you look around you and you see the old generation, one of the things that you can distinguish yourself and to take over from the old generation is to try and change things and be part of the change that you are bringing about. Uh, there is this 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 really, uh, if you speak about cynics, I, I'm quite concerned about Israel, the whole kind of uh, apocalyptic, uh, uh, loving type of group of people who basically want the, the world to kind of end and to be destroyed and for things to go horrible, because I think that their theory basically is that their life is quite miserable, and they're very envious of people around them, and they think if everybody's, you know, they don't mind dying as long as everybody whom they envy basically dies with them. Exactly. Uh, and, yeah. And and you you have more and more of these people, especially people who like lose their house and stuff. And and the, these these type of, of of group generally troubles me. And I think there is also this group which wants to like get rid of the government and like you know going into these uh, kind of like let like, let's take our AK forty seven and kind of go around. Well, well, well like I mean, y'all recently had a set of, uh, uh, you know, it. Uh, I don't know if we should talk about this or not, because, I mean, it made national news, and it's kind of died down, but, I mean, that's a global sentiment right now. I mean, heck, yeah. y'all recently had a set of, uh, let's just say, people not exactly acting the most civilized. <laughs> yeah, but you, you, I'm not sure exactly which one you referred to, but, I mean, 9-11 is approaching pretty soon, so... Oh, I... Guess, I uh, yeah, yeah I, and now I... Uh, there was a joke that I read in, uh, in Reddit. They say, what's the difference between a, uh, between a cow and 9-11? After after ten years, you stop. You, after ten years, you stop milking a cow. Yeah, you so, know. So I mean, I mean, even it, now you see all this kind of like. I, I I I realize that this is not the popular thing, at least according to the media and everything over here. But I've been sick of 9/11 since 9/11. You know, it happened. It's a horrible thing. Roughly ten thousand people died, but you know, stop. You know, if it, we we finally started to make fun of that over here. You know, nine eleven, nine eleven, nine eleven. It's like let's move on. Let's find something uh, more relevant to today. And that sounds cynic, and people are gonna are gonna yell at me for saying that. But it, it's no, I think funny. it's becoming a bit more of a. Uh, uh, well, there is a, a very polite way of saying it, and there is the very uh, sh you know shock effect type of way of saying that, like you know, fuck nine eleven, things like that. And you could actually say something like, you know, we have to move on, and this is being used by politicians to try and push policies and try to scare the public and stuff. Yeah. So, it, yeah. It, well, that, that's the thing. When it's brought up, it's brought up for the sole reason of fear mongering. It, 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 it's, they're trying, it's, the sales pitch is it's being kept alive like Pearl Harbor, we'll never forget. And the reality is nobody, with the, with very few exceptions, most people in the United States, do not celebrate or honor or remember Pearl Harbor Day. You know, everyone's just kind of, oh yeah, that, that's right, that happened. And, and there's, they don't want that to happen to 9-11, just like nobody wanted that to happen to Pearl Harbor. Remembering the loss is one thing. Using it for fear-mongering for political gain, which is how it's being used, that to me is worse than forgetting it, because it's like dancing on those people's grave for personal profit. Yeah, or even invoking all kinds of mass murder cases and stuff, and trying to use yeah. that to, uh, yeah. I mean, th this this is this is just generally. Uh, I'm not sure how we got into this subject in general, but I think it, it's actually started with us talking about politicians trying to serve corporations, uh, and this is to do with uh, with distrust in the government and uh, and the fact that well, what we are seeing there is not very unique to Microsoft. So I mean, I'm looking mostly at cables to do with Linux and with open source and. Perhaps uh, Apple isn't really very present there because Apple was mostly a small company with many of the cables were around. So you know, unless you're looking at cables from like 2006, 7, 8, you, you probably won't see much of Apple in them. But the and also it's very hard to search Apple in general. I'll give you I'll give you a, a bit of experience I've had is sometimes when you try to look at a a quote from Steve Jobs or from Apple or anything to do with those companies, it's very very Google unfriendly. You will not find anything. You will not find quotes. You will barely find even even Steve Jobs is such a generic name, and the, his last name is basically like a word. Uh, it's really really hard to. I mean, if you use the quotes and everything else, try and find quotes from that. I I, I, I honestly. Now we could look at that two ways. We could look at that as Google censoring Apple, or we could look at that as one of the many ways in which Google's continued war on low quality is having uh, collateral damage on the searchability of the internet 
because I know what's causing that. It's that all the Apple fanboys, you know, go create tin sites where they basically parrot this, so it becomes internet spam by Google's algorithm. 